Here's a, a question regarding an extensor mechanism problem. This is a 54-year-old woman who had physical therapy three months after a total knee uh, replacement, felt a pop and developed increased pain in her knee. Unfortunately, she continued therapy for another three months and has reported weakness and frequent buckling. On exam, uh, she has full passive extension, but a 60 degree lag. The lateral radiograph is shown here. And once again, we see a, a patella in a alta position. And this is a, a chronic uh, issue. So the appropriate treatment is going to be reconstruction with a, a bone tendon allograph. Again, with a chronic problem, uh, trying to perform a repair, even augmented with a hamstring autograph, is unlikely uh, to be uh, successful. When looking at extensor mechanism rupture, thankfully the incidence, again, is quite low. Uh, the most common cause intraoperatively is an avulsion from the tibial tubercle, usually with a stiff uh, knee with uh, undue uh, tension placed on uh, a retractor. In terms of postoperative extensor mechanism ruptures, these can occur with manipulation, as uh, Tom mentioned earlier, uh, impingement uh, from uh, perhaps a loose uh, patella component would be one example, or trauma, which, uh, which is probably the most common uh, reason why this would occur postoperatively. This is a 62-year-old male who underwent a routine total knee orthoplasty with a cruciate retaining prosthesis. Six months after the operation, the patient uh, heard a pop while working out with physical therapy. Uh, on physical examination, this patient has a small but palpable defect in the quadriceps tendon. However, he's able to maintain active, although weak, extension of the knee from a flex position. It's decided to treat the patient non-operatively with a knee immobilizer for six weeks. And the question asks, which of the following is the most likely outcome? The answer that uh, is supposed to be selected is a minor extension lag with acceptable flexion. So in this case, where the patient has a partial quadriceps uh, tendon injury and is able to uh, extend the knee, in other words, the extensor mechanism is intact, this is a situation where excellent results have been obtained with non-operative uh, treatment. If the patient has a disrupted extensor mechanism, that would be a reason for repair. So again, it's emphasized here that it's appropriate to treat a patient uh, with a knee immobilizer for about six weeks uh, after a partial quadriceps uh, tendon uh, rupture. In terms uh, of repair of the extensor mechanism, it may be appropriate for a partial patella tendon uh, avulsion to uh, repair that uh, only. However, most of uh, the patella tendon uh, injuries uh, should be augmented with a graft of uh, some kind. In terms of using an extensor mechanism allograft, if there is a complete laceration of the patella tendon without adequate patella bone stock, an extensor mechanism allograft is the most appropriate choice here. I'm going to re-emphasize that if you don't have adequate patella bone stock and there is a disruption of the extensor mechanism, it is wise to consider an extensor mechanism allograft. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.